Jordan, I guess a big, pretty big honor came your way on Monday, the American uh, Player of the Week. For someone who's you know, grinded all through last year and had a really hot start to this season, what did it mean to you to get that award? Um, it meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to me to receive, to receive the recognition for having a good week, but... Do you want me to hold it? it? No, oh, okay. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah, no, it meant a lot to me, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like... It's already over now, and I'm just focusing on what I'm doing today because, I mean, Love Lady always reminds us that every day is the most important day of our season, so I'm kind of just laser focused on today. Like, I want to get better today. I don't really care about the past, but it did mean a lot to me and probably meant a lot more to my family and friends more than it did to me, but it was nice. It was definitely a nice experience. But what did it mean also to perform or the way you performed against a team like that in their home stadium, a big weekend for your two overall, but the, the numbers you put up against that kind of opponent had to feel good for you. Yeah, it felt good. It felt good to go out there. Like we do our routines every single day the whole year and just trust our process that we're going in the right direction. So to go out there and be able to execute against such a good team so early was was nice, but we expected it to be honest. We expected to go out there and compete. I know I'm a pretty confident guy, so I believe that I could compete at that level even though I didn't necessarily have the experience of playing every day all year last year, but I knew what I can do, put some good swings on on the ball and good things are going to happen, you know. So if I mean, it was nice though. It was fun. It was fun to play in front of the atmosphere more than anything. Big crowd, like people yelling at us. We love that kind of stuff. Let's talk a little bit more about this kind of fun, yeah, because you, you go on the road. I know it's kind of like a team bonding experience. You yeah. go on your first road trip and to be able to put up those numbers in a hostile environment, not just one or two days, but all three days. How fun was that to take part in? It was a blast, man. It was it was awesome. We. Uh, I'm kind of one of those guys that I kind of like the fans like yelling at me when I'm on the road a little bit more than I do at home. It, it always just fires you up a little bit more, kind of just shut the crowd up, tell them to be quiet, and just go out there and perform our best. So they, it was honestly awesome. It's something I'm going to remember forever. Coach talked about the atmosphere, your approach, the intensity you guys came with. He said you set the standard over the weekend. How do you guys continue that? I think it all just comes with our uh, routine, sticking to our routines. Uh, our hitting coaches, uh, Teddy and Andy, they get us locked in every day with our scouting reports. We know individually what we need to work on, what we need to get better at. So we're pretty prepared and it's just a day-to-day -day grind, getting better every single day. And we, uh, we got early work going on right now. This happens every day. We're out here before practice, getting our work in. You know, we just, we just gotta stick to our routines and trust our process. As long as we trust ourselves and we're confident, we're gonna, we're gonna do some big things for sure. What, what happened over the weekend, those types of things, those intangibles, are those things that, that just come or are those things that you can remember and apply? Um, I think it just kind of comes when you play free. Uh, back in my junior college, our coach used to always tell us that when the game starts, you shouldn't be thinking about anything exterior. Just kind of just be free, be in the moment, and let those good things happen naturally because we've all gotten thousands of hits. We've all struck out hundreds of people in our lives to get to this level, so we know we can do it. It's just a matter of going out there, being free, and letting it all happen naturally. How are you a different hitter this year than maybe you were last year? I know you didn't play a whole lot last year, but just coming in this year, I mean, where have you seen the biggest differences? Um, I don't know if I really see a big, big difference. Uh, I just think the just the confidence that my coaches have put in me, that they believe in me and they know I'm going to go out there and be successful meant a lot. But at the end of the day, it's just... It's just going out there and get the chance to play consistently. I always believed in myself that I, if I got consistent at bats, I'd be successful. So now that's coming, it's kind of just like attack the moment, attack on default, not pressing or trying to do too much, just letting myself naturally do what I'm going to do. What was last year like for you, though? Obviously coming to a new school, but really from across the country, basically. What was last year like for you? It was definitely a little bit of a culture shock. I'm from Washington State originally, and then I played junior college in Arizona. So it was a little bit different, but... You know, it was tough watching those games, not, not getting in every game that I wanted to, not playing, but the whole time I was just visualizing that moment and preparing myself mentally because I knew it, was, it would come eventually. So try to just be the best team that I can be. I know I love all these guys and I didn't ever want to be a negative source of energy even if I wasn't playing. That doesn't change and be a good teammate regardless. So I just try to put all my energy into being a good teammate, getting better and waiting for my moment and I knew it would come eventually. And Lovely said during the preseason that he thinks the game just slowed down for you. And is that something that comes with at-bats or you know, experience? Or do you think the game has slowed down for you compared to last year? I think it has to a certain extent for sure. I think the at-bats, just getting comfortable. Uh, we do a lot of mental game work and I feel like working on our mind is something we put a huge focus in and that's helped me a lot to be able to just live in the present moment rather than focusing on what's gonna happen next or what happened before. I'm just in this moment right now and that's where I wanna be. And, 
it has slowed it down for me quite a bit, so I do agree with that. Obviously, the, he, you know, Coach Love put a lot of trust in you to be the four-hole hitter. That you know, I know in this lab it's a little different. You know, there's not assigned roles for each hitter, but to be the four-hole in baseball means a lot. So to come out right away and to sort of reward, you know, prove that you deserve it, uh, you know, that has to feel good for you over the last few, first two weeks, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful for the opportunity. I, I always want to be grateful with everything that I receive in this uh, life, but you know, I've worked really hard for it, so I think I think I have earned it, uh, regardless of the results. We're, we're all about the process here, and I think my process has been very good and working and preparing for the moment, so I've been just thankful for it, honestly. Coming all the way from Washington to UCF, uh, when you made the decision a couple years ago to come here, I mean, what stood out? Why did you want to be a UCF Knight? Um, it wasn't really anything too crazy. It was just I uh, had a good freshman season at JUCO, then sophomore season came around, I got injured, I broke my left hand, and then a lot of the schools kind of were iffy about me and stuff, and then UCF told me, they're like, you're our guy, we want you here regardless, we don't care about the injury or what happens with our draft, who we lose, who we keep, we want you here, and that just kind of meant a lot to me, so I was like, didn't even go on a visit, I'm just like, I'm coming to UCF, I want to go be a knight go live out in Florida for a while. I wasn't scared of going across the country because I'd already been away from my parents for a couple years, so I'm still talking to them every day, but I was comfortable with it. Being from Washington, I'm sure travel ball, et cetera, you played against some California players. Having a California team come in this week and being a team from Florida, is there a Florida versus California mentality? Um, I don't know if there's necessarily a Florida versus California mentality. Uh, they do play a little bit different. They have that West Coast West Coast style of baseball, more small ball, bunt, steal, like throw a lot of off speed pitches, that type of thing. So we're going to get tested a little bit different way. Auburn's that country hard ball, like try to throw it by you, try to hit it farther than you. So I don't know if there's really a rivalry between Florida and California. Lovely talks about a lot about a faceless opponent. We're just going out there and competing against ourselves, trying to be the best we can be every day. So I think our focus is all on us, basically. We don't, we don't think too much about the other teams. When you were coming out of JUCO, were there other schools other than UCF that were coming after you, or is it mostly UCF? I, well, I had a good amount of schools talking to me early, but then when I got my injury, it was kind of like I, no, no, nobody knew if I was going to be healthy or not or how I was doing. And then I had a few schools, a few visits arranged, but UCF was the one that were like, we're with you regardless. And I was just like, all right, like right, I'm coming. I'm going to come play for y'all and have a good, good career here. You're, go ahead. Your, your, your confidence is very obvious, and you've you stressed it. Did you feel like this kind of start, maybe the start of the big season for you, was just something that you knew was going to happen? It was just a matter of time. Yeah, I believe that. I I, uh, I always try to only expect uh, positive things in my future. I don't try to expect things going bad. So I was expecting to start off good, but I knew if I faced uh, some difficulties, like with everything that Love Lady has preached to us about the mental game, I knew that if things do go bad, we're we understand how to handle failure because this is a game of failure. So I, uh, I'm comfortable with that too. I'm comfortable with, with failing and coming back from it as well as being confident that I could succeed the next time. So, I mean, I expect it to be a good year. I expect it to be a good year for everybody. Our, our coaches are amazing. I, I can't stress enough how, how good our hitting coaches are. Teddy and Andy, they would do anything for us. They would, it could be like midnight and I could text Teddy up, hey, you want to come throw BP to me? And I'm sure he would. I wouldn't do it to him, but I know he would if, he want, if, he, if I asked. So. I love those guys. Real quick, we're in the 38. Is that something guys kind of now motivationally strive to try to get to do? How do you guys look at that? I think so. I think it's just it's just kind of an honor. Like I wasn't really expecting it. And then uh, when Lovely told me I'd wear the 38 on Saturday, it was kind of like you kind of take a step back and you're like every single day we're grateful for this opportunity to play baseball because they can get taken away at any moment. So I knew when I went out to the field, I'm like, I'm going to give everything I can on this field right now because tomorrow's not guaranteed for any of us. So it's just, it's just an opportunity. We know the way he lived his life. We know his parents. We know they wish that they could watch their son go out there and play ball. So it's just an honor to be able to represent him and his family because they're all great people. And I wish that he could have had a little bit more uh, baseball career. But we're going to try to live, live through him a little bit and have uh, I don't know. Just, just it's just a lot. It's, cool. it's, it's just a cool thing for us. It's kind of like you can't really put it into words how it feels to go and wear, wear that number to represent him and his family. Thanks, Jordan. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.